Hello everyone, welcome to another time with Python and this time we'll be talking about interpolation, interpolation of data. Now what is interpolation? What exactly is interpolation? Interpolation is when you have a range of values and you are trying to find points that you do not know from the points that you know. So it's technically going from known known to known unknown. Right. I'm going to quickly show a little demo on what that means. Okay, so let's see. Let me go to the web. And let's see if we can show a little something. Yes, so if you look at the first image, it's an example of linear interpolation, right? You have two known values, and you're trying to get the unknown values, right? So this is an example of linear interpolation. Um, there is a mathematical computation that you can do if you do math uh, statistics or mathematics. You can find out the how to compute linear interpolation, right? That's another example of linear interpolation. There's also a polynomial interpolation where if you can represent your data points in in a polynomial form then you should be able to use polynomial that's either quadratic cubic and so on and so forth this really gets complex very fast right okay so that's that about so there are a couple of interpolation types, interpolation types that you can uh, you can have, but we'll just look at one or two when we do when we do this demo, right? Okay, so let me go back to Jupyter Lab and the plan. Let, let's 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 get ourselves some form of data. So I'm going to pause the video, import the data, and we're going to get that running. Just a moment. Okay, so we're going to be using them. Um, very small, a very small data set. Here I've imported pandas and numpy. And here I have my sample data. It's just a list of lists that we eventually transform into a data frame with an index and a list of columns, right? When I run this, I expect that I should have a small table, small, small table. So um, the goal here is to say, okay, a very good example, an interesting way to describe this would be you have a list of um, temperatures, temperatures, temperature values. At a depth and uh, pressure level, right? So if I have a depth of one mile, two miles, three miles, four miles, and five miles, and I have pressure values of 1.0 bar, 1.5 bar, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, we have these as a list of temperatures, that, you know, more like just something of that sort, right? But like I said, this is mostly randomly generated. Okay, so the goal is we are looking for um, the most likely value of the data where the index here, which is 1.0.5, is say 1.7, right? And what's in the column here is say 2.5, right? So the goal, so I'm going to say that this is an X and Y for mathematics. So we know that x, so we are looking for find the value of, let me come here and call this temperature, okay, I'm sorry, pressure values, and I call this depth. So we are looking for 
find the temperature when the pressure value is 1.7 and the depth is 2.5. No, that's not supposed to be So it's the miles. And it's supposed to be bar. All right. So that's our challenge, right? Okay. So here we have um, this. And we are trying to get the values for when the pressure value, which is the index part, is 1.7. And the depth, which is our coulombs, is 2.5. So first things first, let's get our tab, uh, data, that's the unknowns, into the table. So I'm going to use uh, df.lock x value, 1.7, y value, 2.5. What he's telling me is that um, let's it's equal to mp dot nine. So I'm I'm in, inserting an empty. Let's do that. Then if I say let's look at let's let's check out, let's check out what happens. So what happens here is that I've inserted a list of nones in both <clears throat> the rows and the columns for one point seven and two point five. Right. Good. Of course, that means if I do mp dot lock one point seven two point five, what should that give me? No. Okay. Did I miss? Oh, my apologies. That should be df. Apologies. Yes. So there we are. And if you are certain that this is what we are looking for, we want we want the intersection of one point seven and two point five. Now, next thing I like to do is to index my data so that it is sorted in increasing or decreasing order, right? Good. So how do we do that? Okay, to do that, we should, we can use the index. Of course, for, for if we are trying to sort the index, just use sort index right but let us use the index so that because you can't sort you can't sort columns so let's use the index now what does re-index do i like to use this re-index allows you to re-index just like the english word though, to re-index a data set based on the criteria so let's use this label for example to the columns so i'm going to do sorted df dot columns before we even do that let me show us what sorted df dot columns means so if i do sorted df dot columns what does that do for us so if you notice it rearranges the columns in ascending order so if i is if i enter this sorted into this what happens? Because we are sorting the columns. Remember that when you are re-indexing, there is an axis that tells us when you're able to sort the columns or the rows, right? Since we are interested in the columns, we just pick axis equal to one. And what happens here, if you look very closely, this has now been re-indexed. Columns now have now been sorted in that form, right? Of course, the rows are not sorted yet. We can do that as well. Df dot index sorted df dot index, right? Of course, uh, let's just use axis is equal to zero. And what happens here? Remember, since we are not reassigning it to df, we're just showing how it works, right? So this means here that now the rows are sorted. So you can just combine both of them 
call and say df is equal to df dot reindex sorted df dot index right as this is equal to zero and then do the same thing again the index sorted df dot columns at this is equal to one let's show df to be sure of what we're doing df and here we are so this has been sorted by index and then the columns have also been sorted so right there in the middle of the well for example if it's drilling they are trying to do so right in the middle of the well, you can see that it's a 2.5 and then it's 1.7 so now we have been able to get our data in a format interpolation from picking okay yeah so now that we are ready let's just interpolate so interpolate i like to do as usual this so the default is linear what it will interpolate is x is equal to zero which will most likely be default of the rows right so There's linear, there are other forms of interpolation, time interpolation, index interpolation, part interpolation. I think the one that is quite popular is the spline interpolation. Yeah, so nearest zero, quadratic cubic spline, and so on and so forth. Right? Um, if you understand the nature of the data that you're working with, right? Typically, the distribution of the data, then you can be able to pick the right interpolation type to use. Right? Okay, so if I just do df.interpolate, it uses linear and it does only the rules. Oh, so, typically, what is doing here is filling in between 1.0 and 2.0 is 1.5, right? Between 10.0 and 8 is 6, the secondary is correct. Between 0 and 8 and 8 is 4. Between 10 and 8 is 9. It is linear, right? Between 0 and 1 is 2. So really, this is just, if you're only considering that effort, this only means that you have not been, you have not been still been able to fill it. What that means is that, as I said, you're just interpolating across, down the rows, you're also going to interpolate across the columns, right? And that's as simple as interpolating axis is equal to 1. If it's linear, if you expect it to be linear, same thing happens. Between 10 and 0, it's 5, right? And of course, if you look very closely, it only interpolates across and it used to that there. So that means what you are doing is you are simply combining both interpolations. So we do df dot interpolate dot interface axis equal to 1. <clears throat> and there we have it. We have successfully interpolated in such a way as to have 6.0 as the most likely using linear interpolation the most likely value for when the depth is 2.5 and the pressure is 1.7 right <clears throat> okay so we can assign this to df if we are interested in linear interpolation if you want to do other forms of interpolation that should probably be as easy as you can imagine it. Let's do spline interpolation with um, a the cubic spline. So I oh my apologies, that was wrong. I was copying the wrong thing. Okay, so here we have it. I can give this a method. Is that correct? I believe so. One second, method is equal to line, right? <coughs> okay, so if we are doing spline, what's this? What's that stuff we're doing? So we have it. Order becomes <coughs> three, right? So we can do that here and then do the same thing here. Method is equal to line. Order is equal to three. Axis is equal to one. Okay, so 
<clears throat> what has happened in this case is that I use the spline, cubic spline method of interpolation, and then we have a, well, not very far away, but a different value, 5.49, of course. If you want to round, you can just add round to the small places. And there we have it, 5.49, so using spline interpolation. So it's, you, you have to decide on how your, of course, after analyzing the kind of data that you have, this is not a demo, and these are random values. You can be certain that it will not just be as um, realistic as you can expect it to be. Right? So, technically, it's really. So, I'm going to just assign this to DF. Let's just stick with this line. And we have our values of DF. So, of course, that means if I do df.locate 1.7. 2.5 and we have 5.49 using interpolation. So I hope that um, we, in these few minutes, you've been able to understand how to interpolate with pandas and with Python, right? So till next time, I'll see. Keep being the best. And bye.